before we actually pull this thing out and start it, I want to go through some of the starting procedures because it happens very fast and I'll explain it to you now so it'll make more sense to you. We have five separate fuel pumps that we test on this thing before we start it. The jet prop utilizes a header tank sitting behind the engine uh, in the baggage compartment. Each tank has its own pump that pumps the fuel into the header tank. So we have to check each tank manually. So we put wing tanks on manual. We check the left tank, make sure that it's delivering pressure. The right tank, make sure it's delivering pressure. Then the manual goes off and back to auto. And then we check the emergency pump, which pumps fuel out of the tanks. That goes on and this will fill the header tank pretty rapidly. When the header tank is full, it will begin to overpressure and you will get a header tank high pressure light here that tells you that your header tank is now full and you've done your check of the emergency pump and it goes off. Now we have the two booster pumps which are in the header tank which push the fuel to the engine. The way we like to do this is to alternate running it on pump one and pump two. So if it's an even day, we will run the even pump. If it's an odd day, we will run the odd pump, pump one. So let's say that it's an odd day today. So first we're going to check pump two and make sure that it's delivering the pressure. Then we're going to turn it on pump one, make sure it's delivering the pressure. And we're going to leave that pump on because we're going to then go through the ignition test and then through the start sequence. Any one of these pumps will keep this engine operating. So it's a lot of complexity, but it's also a lot of redundancy. Now that we've done our five pump check, we're going to check our igniters. First, we're going to put the igniter on auto, and we should see this light telling us that the igniter is on, and we can hear a clicking outside that also lets us know that the igniter is, is operating. And we turn it to on, and it then we move our fuel lever forward until the igniters go on. So now we know that our igniters work both in auto and in the on switch position. The auto position turns the igniters on automatically when the torque goes down below a specified level, approximately 300 pound-feet. So if you were to have a flame out and your torque goes away, when this is on auto, it's immediately going to turn the igniters on so you can get a restart. Now I mentioned that with the inertial separator off, it reduces the interturbine temperature. So when we start this, we are going to actually turn the inertial separator off because we get a cooler start that way. Then once the engine started, we will turn the separator back on so that we don't pick up any uh, foreign object damage while we're on the ground. Now let's drag this thing out and show you how we do an actual start. Okay, we're going to make sure that uh, my landing gear emergency uh, lever is in, gear is down, manual override is covered. want to make sure that my throttle is out of beta and on its stop. We're going to put the propeller out of feather condition is off and we have our trims and our fuel come around here make sure our switches are right we check our windshield make sure it's off come around and make sure that our pressure is uh, cabin pressure is in here all of our switches are in the off position here and up top everything is in its proper position and we're ready to start this thing so here we go battery master goes on we're going to check battery one 24 volts that's okay Battery 2, 24 volts, that's okay. We go to batteries both. Now we're going to do the 5 pump check. Okay. Our left pump is providing pressure. Right pump is providing pressure. These go off and we turn the emergency boost on to make sure it's providing pressure and to make sure our header tank is full, which it now is. Then we're going to check 
pump two, it's pumping, and pump one, it's pumping. We're going to leave that on. Now we're going to check our igniters. Auto, the igniter goes on, and then on the on setting, when I change, uh, open the condition lever, it goes on. We're now ready to start. Starter goes on. We're waiting for it to stabilize at over 13 percent and looks like we're going to get somewhere around 15 percent fuel goes on the igniters are on there's the fire now we're going to monitor ITT to make sure that it stays cool nice cool start once we're at 52 percent, starter goes off, ignition goes off. Now we're going to check our standby alternator, and we're going to pull battery one. We make sure that the battery is uh, charging. Ice separator, we want to make sure that that's on. Confirm that our transfer pumps and boost pump are on. Enunciator panel check. Engine gauges in the green check. Okay, now we're going to switch to battery two and make sure that it's charging. Now we're going to turn the generator on and make sure that it takes the load from the alternator, which it does. Standby alternator goes off. Generator's on now. We can turn the radios on and put on the headset. Now while we're here, we're going to check and make sure that our uh, annual throttle or fuel override is going to work. So what I'm going to do is start to bump this thing. This light comes on to tell me that it is active and I push it enough times to get a torque increase right here there's 110 so we're going to pull that off immediately and recover that now while we're uh, getting ready to take off at the uh, departure end notice my fuel flow is 13.3 uh, gallons an hour Stratopulse Tower, wind to re five zero at five, north departure approved, runway to re five, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, runway three five. stable and we're climbing 2,500 feet a minute. gas generator to be down below 10% and then we will turn off the boost pumps. Boost pumps off, generator off and she shut down. Somebody's going to get me on that one because I should have had the generator off when I shut everything down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>